From Avogadro's law, we know that at a fixed temperature and pressure, the number of gas moles is directly proportional to the volume of a gas. We can apply this concept to gas stoichiometry problems. First of all, let's remember the relationship from the ideal gas law, that is that the pressure times the volume of a gas is equal to the number of gas moles times the gas constant times the temperature. Now if we solve for volume in this case, volume is equal to the number of gas moles N times R times T divided by P. Keeping T and P constant, this factor will collapse into one constant and we can see here that volume is equal to the number of gas moles times this constant. The constant, of course, will vary with temperature and pressure, but as long as you're holding the temperature and pressure constant, the number of the volume of the gas will be proportional to the number of gas moles. And so from this, we can see this relationship, um, a linear relationship between the volume of a gas and the number of moles of a gas and the slope of the line, we can see that they're directly proportional. As the volume gets larger, the number of gas moles will be, get larger. And then the slope of the line, of course, will vary. Um, this constant would be the slope of the line. It will vary with the temperature and the pressure. But from this, we can extrapolate and use this idea to interpret chemical equations, gas phase chemical equations. For example, Starting with 3.5 liters of ammonia and excess oxygen, how many liters of nitric oxide and how many liters of water vapor will be formed? Now looking at this example, we have a balanced chemical equation and we can read it in terms of moles. For example, 4 moles of ammonia will react with 5 moles of oxygen gas to give 4 moles of nitric oxide plus 6 moles of water vapor. But because of our relationship from Avogadro's law, we can also write or read uh, four volumes of ammonia plus five volumes of oxygen will react to form four volumes of nitric oxide and six volumes of water vapor. So in this particular example, we can, um, knowing that we're starting with 3.5 liters of ammonia and excess oxygen, we can correctly predict the uh, volumes of products that we would expect to be formed based on Avogadro's law and their volume rela relationships that are inherent in this balanced chemical equation. So let's just be systematic and first of all look at what's given. In this case we have four, excuse me, 3.5 liters of ammonia and excess oxygen and what's wanted is we want to figure out how many how many liters of nitric oxide will be formed and how many liters of water vapor will be formed. Alright, and so the conversion is going to be simple. It's just from liters of ammonia to liters of nitric oxide for the one problem and a separate problem would be liters of ammonia to liters of water vapor. Now the conversion factor to make this conversion from ammonia to nitric oxide is just going to be from the reaction stoichiometry. And what we know from the reaction stoichiometry is that for every four liters of ammonia used, we form four liters of nitric oxide. The same will be true for the conversion to the water vapor. We'll use the water, the, excuse me, the reaction stoichiometry Looking at the balanced chemical equation, we see that for every four liters of ammonia used, we make six liters of water vapor. Okay, so now we have everything we need to solve this problem. So we can uh, do the conversion. Starting with 3.5 liters of ammonia, I can multiply by the unit factor. Let me see, I want my my ammonia to be on bottom so it will cancel, so it's 4 liters of ammonia uh, for every 4 liters of nitric oxide formed. So let me see here, the liters of ammonia cancels, the number 4 cancels, and that leaves us with 3.5 liters of nitric oxide formed. 
for the water, it's a similar case, we're starting with 3.5 liters of ammonia, excess oxygen, so we know we've got plenty of oxygen. Our conversion is for every 4 liters of ammonia used, um, we create 6 liters of water vapor, and so the liter of ammonia unit cancels, and so we're left with 3.5 times 6 divided by 4, and when we round off, that equals about 5.3 liters of water vapor formed.